Hello again, welcome to another uh, You Learn English uh, video lesson, um, 30 minute English Google Hangout lessons here. I'm Steve, and we're going to continue with the uh, idioms that we've been dealing with so far. Um, don't forget, you're welcome to join the lesson at any time. If you want to share some questions with me, you can jump in. Uh, I had a visitor there about two minutes ago. She jumped in and then she jumped back out. So feel free to come in, stick around, ask some questions. We've got 30 minutes. We've got two new idioms for you today. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you right now. Okay. Idioms three. So this is our third Google Hangout lesson, our third 30 minute English lesson, looking at idioms. Okay. So we're going to do a quick review as this is our third lesson. We have already looked at four idioms. Here they are. Number one, out of my depth, to be out of my depth. Number two, shortcut or shortcuts. We saw the example, there are no shortcuts to success. Number three, a piece of cake. Do you remember what that means? A piece of cake. The fourth one is have a field day. Now, instead, let me just go back to you. Instead of me going through all those again, um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you the link. I'm going to show you the link here to where you can find those on the ULEARN video site. Okay, so here's the link. There you go, www.video.ulearn.ie. That's where we store all our videos. The first two hangouts, the first two 30 minute English lessons are available there. Remember, the first lesson, the first was just an introductory lesson. The second, and uh, the second hangout was about. Um, we dealt with another two idioms, um, and here we are. This is the third one. Okay, so let's continue. Then we've seen four idioms already. We're going to look at two more idioms today. Okay, let's go back to that screen. Right, our first idiom today. Here's our situation. We've got John and Dave, they're having a chat together, and John asks his friend, did you watch the Formula One race last night? Dave responds, I did. It was very exciting. Three drivers bit the dust in the first lap. Okay, so immediately, let's look at that. Two people are chatting about a Formula One race, and all the language is very literal. We talked about literal language in the second lesson. So Dave said, yes, it was very exciting, and three drivers bit the dust. Okay, so bit from the verb to bite, and dust. Again, no literal connection. Okay, so Let's take a look at that and try to explore what that medium, idiom can mean. Not medium, that's not even a word. Okay, so where's the idiom? I've already told you that it's what Dave said. He says, I did, it was very exciting. Three drivers bit the dust in the first lap. Okay, there it is, highlighted for you in yellow. Bit the dust. Bit comes from the verb to bite, okay? There you go, to bite the dust. And the meaning of it, to fail or to not succeed, to lose or to quit or to stop functioning, okay? If any of you are fans of Queen, the, uh, the famous rock band, and um, you might remember the song uh, Another One Bites the Dust. Okay, I'm not going to sing it for you now, um, but you know, if you know that song, Another One Bites the Dust, Another One Fails, Another One Ceases to Function, Another One Loses. 
Okay, that's what Queen is talking about. Let's go back to our screen and we'll continue with that idiom. Okay, to bite the dust, to fail, to not succeed, to lose or to quit, and to stop functioning. What we need to do now is to look at some examples. So, my car bit the dust last week, so now I have to buy a new one. Okay, my car bit the dust. We we'll go back up to our meanings. My car bit the dust. My car failed. Not exactly in this case. My car didn't succeed. Well, a car doesn't win or lose, really. Um, it's the last one there. My car stopped functioning. Okay, my car stopped functioning last week. Um, essentially, my car died. Now, all of the meanings there, fail, not succeed, lose, quit, stop functioning, etc. They're similar but slightly different. Okay, so the expression to bite the dust can have a couple of meanings. Right. Here's another example. We've got Mike chatting to Frank. Mike asks Frank, how's Maria? Frank says, oh, we broke up. That relationship bit the dust about two months ago. Okay. Now that relationship bit the dust. That's that's quite a direct way, basically, to say that the relationship failed. The relationship stopped functioning. Maybe Frank and his girlfriend Maria were arguing too much. Maybe there were too many difficulties in the relationship. Whatever. The end result was that the relationship bit the dust. Okay, it was not working. It stopped functioning. It failed. So Frank and his girlfriend Maria, they quit the relationship. Okay, make sense? Excellent. Right, let's go back. Now, there's one aspect of this. It's a small aspect, but let's look at it anyway. We've got the pronunciation. So Frank and Maria, they're, you know, or sorry, not Frank and Maria. What are the names? Uh, Mike and Frank, they're talking about the relationship. And Frank says the relationship bit the dust. It bit the dust. We don't exactly say it bit the dust. Okay? We're not going to say it like a robot in that case. We're not going to say it in a, in a way like that. It doesn't sound very natural. So normally what happens with the word the, um, we can drop the E and it's going to sound like this. It bit the dust. Okay, so the gets swallowed up a little bit, and we say the dust. Um, if you want to try that yourself, uh, you know, just practice it. So we don't say it bit the dust. That's not so natural that you you know you sound like a robot if if that's how you speak. We we try to say with more of a rhythm. It bit the dust. Okay, the dust. The becomes the. Can you hear that? Can you hear the difference? The, the, right? Um, with practice, that becomes quite easy. And then if you if you are able to speak like that, to say it bit the dust, it sounds much more natural and people will think that you're, you're more fluent with, with your English. Okay. So that's just one small little pronunciation aspect. Right, let's get back to it. Our second idiom. So let's move on. Mike fell apart when he learned that he'd failed his exam. Okay, let's look at this now closely. Mike fell apart when he learned that he'd failed his exam. So Mike did an exam, maybe it was an important exam and he didn't pass. So he fell apart. Now, literally, Let's talk about this again. Literally speaking, Mike, he didn't fall apart. His hands didn't fall off. Uh, his nose didn't fall off. His legs didn't fall off. Mike did not literally fall apart. Okay, so that's our idiom. Mike fell apart. Let's take a look at what it means. Where's the idiom? Mike fell apart when he learned that he'd failed his exam. There it is highlighted for us, as I explained, fell apart. Fell 
of course, is the past tense of the verb to fall. Okay, so to fall apart. Now, what does to fall apart mean? So here are some questions. Was Mike happy that he failed? So think of yourself. Imagine this situation. You have an important exam to do and you do a lot of study. You feel personally that you're very prepared for the exam and then the day arrives, you do the exam, you think it was okay and when you get the results you learn that you, you know, that you actually failed the exam. So you're not happy, you're not, you're not pleased with yourself. So you'll see here it's more probable that Mike was upset, angry and disappointed. Okay, so Mike fell apart. Mike was upset, he was angry, he was disappointed. Let's look more closely at that. Here's some meanings for you. To fall apart then, quite simply means to become very emotional. Like Mike, for example, he failed his exam. So Mike was very upset, he was angry, he was sad also. It can also mean to break. If something fall, falls apart, it breaks. It can also mean to fail. It fell apart, it failed. Okay, so we're going to continue. Let's move down and look at some examples. John's plans to travel around South America fell apart when his grandmother died. Okay, so here is John. He has all of these plans to go to South America. He's got his passport ready. He's booked into a number of different hotels, maybe in Brazil. He's planning on going to Argentina then, perhaps to Uruguay and Chile, etc., etc. So John has made a lot of plans to travel around South America. Okay, but then unfortunately his grandmother died. So he fell apart. Now, what can that possibly mean? Let's take a look at a closer analysis. Why did John's plans fall apart? Okay, in this case, by the way, we can say that John fell apart, but also his plans fell apart. Okay, so some possible answers. He was very close to his grandmother. So John and his grandmother had a very close relationship. So he had to be with his family. He couldn't, he could not travel to South America because John had to remain in the country and stay with his family. So he could not travel to South America. Okay, so it's quite logical. He was close to his grandmother. He had to stay with his family. He could not travel to South America. Now that example is interesting though, as I explained, because John's plans fell apart. That means the situation, his plans, all his preparation fell apart. But you could also say John fell apart emotionally. Okay, so we said that John was very close to his grandmother. So when she died, John was very upset, very sad, very disappointed, maybe lonely, even a little angry perhaps. He fell apart emotionally speaking, okay? But then of course his plans, his plans also fell apart, his plans failed, okay? He had everything ready but then this unfortunate uh, situation happened and then he couldn't go, okay? Let's go back. Maria fell apart after she broke up with Jose. To break up with, of course, means to, to end a relationship. So Maria and Jose broke up, and as a result, she fell apart. So I think most of us, unfortunately, have been in situations in life where you're in a relationship and maybe it doesn't work, and, and, and you know, you break up, and normally, at least one of the people in, in the couple is very, very sad. 
So maybe Jose told Maria, we're finished. So Maria is very sad. She's very, very emotional. So she falls apart. Or maybe it was Maria's decision to finish the relationship. But still, she's very sad. She's very, very sad that the relationship is, is finished, that it has come to an end. Okay? So Maria fell apart after she broke up with Jose. Okay, she was very emotional and emotionally speaking, she fell apart. Okay, not literal. Her hands didn't fall off, her legs didn't fall off. I mean, maybe they did, but it's not connected to the idiom. Okay, I hope her hands and her legs didn't fall off. Okay, let's go back. Why did Maria fall apart? Okay, so we've discussed this. Possible answers. She was sad. She was upset. She missed Jose. Okay, there you go. So, very simple explanations why Maria was sad when, or why Maria fell apart when she broke up with her boyfriend, Jose. Okay, let's move on. Here is an interesting point. To fall apart versus to bite the dust. It's interesting because both both idioms can mean to fail, okay? So, if you, if something, for example, if your car bites the dust, it fails, it stops functioning, it doesn't work anymore, okay? You think, you're driving to work, your car bites the dust, it fails, you think, oh my god, my car, it's gone, it's done. So that's, that's an example of something failing. Um, and then to fall apart. Okay, so if we talk about a car falling apart, in, in this case, it doesn't really mean fail, so we'd need another example. So a relationship falls apart. <coughs> Excuse me. So a relationship fails. So to bite the dust and to fall apart can both mean to fail in different situations. So let's look at how, the, how they're different. We'll use the example of uh, a car again. Okay, so let's take a look at that. To bite the dust is more final. It has more finality or more, it's, it's more absolute. Okay, to bite the dust is more final, more absolute. So, my car bit the dust means it's dead. My car is dead. The engine failed. Okay, in this case, it fails, but it's dead. It bit the dust. So, um, we were talking about relationships also and breaking up and falling apart, etc. If a relationship bites the dust, it's finished 100%. Okay, it's done. It, you know, it doesn't. There's no um, opportunity for the relationship to come back together again. It, it, it's finished. It's over. However, now let's go back to the car again. To fall apart is not so absolute. Okay. So my car fell apart last week, but I fixed it and now it's fine again. Okay. So if we compare that to bit the dust, my car bit the dust, it's dead. It's not going to work again. My car fell apart, but I fixed it. Now, I, I don't know why in this particular lesson we're talking a lot about cars and a lot about relationships. Maybe there's a connection. But we can use the analogy of relationships also. The relationship bit the dust, it's finished. The relationship fell apart, maybe, maybe it can get back together again, okay? If something falls apart, it suggests you can put it back together again because you have pieces and maybe they can go back again. But if something bit the dust, it's, it's dead, okay? Does that make sense? I'm sure it does. Right. Let's go back here one more time. Okay, so just a, a quick review then. So we've got to bite the dust and to fall apart. Very quickly, 
let's take a look at the meanings of to bite the dust. Here we go. To bite the dust means to fail, to not succeed, to lose, to quit, or to stop functioning. A car bites the dust, it's dead. A relationship bites the dust, it's dead. It's failed. It has not succeeded. Um, let me see. Three, in the original example, three drivers bit the dust in the first lap of the Formula One race. Their cars failed. They stopped functioning, so they could not continue. Okay? So the expression to bite the dust, and there you have all the meanings. The next one, of course, then, let's go right down here, to fall apart. Well, we've just discussed that, to fall apart, and here it is. To become very emotional, to become upset, angry, or sad. So, Maria fell apart after she broke up with Jose, or Mike fell apart when his grandmother died. They were very emotional. But also to break, my car fell apart. The door literally came off my car, okay? Or my car fell apart, it failed, but I could put it back together again, okay? A relationship falls apart, it's possible to put it back together again. It's possible to fix it, okay? So there you go. To bite the dust and to fall apart. Now, as I explained in the first two lessons, this is exactly the kind of opportunity for people to join this lesson. So if you're watching it now, you can click on the link that we've got on Facebook and that we've got on Google Plus, and you can just enter into this lesson and join if you have any questions. Of course, it's not necessary, but you know, it's probably better for you if you've got some questions that you can interact with me face to face through a webcam. But um, you have that opportunity, and that is realistically that is the purpose or the function of these lessons. These are hangouts, so you know it, it is better if people attend and participate because then we can. We can do more examples and I can correct mistakes and stuff like that. Otherwise, this is, a, of course, it's like a lecture. I'm simply teaching you directly what these idioms mean, how we use them, uh, and things like that. Um, otherwise, so that was our third lesson, our third lesson specifically on idioms. The next uh, Hangout lesson, the next online lesson, will be the fourth and the final idiom lesson for a while. Um, the week after this we're going to focus more on just building vocabulary. Of course, you know, we're building our vocabulary with idioms, but more specifically we're going to look at word building. Okay, so if you do have any questions, of course, um, you can email us through our Google Plus uh, page. Um, the email address is youlearnschool at gmail.com. Uh, alternatively, you can post questions beneath the video uh, on our Google Plus feed. Otherwise, if you have been watching, thank you very much. If not, uh, I'm sure you'll see this on our video site or on Facebook or on YouTube and so on. Okay, thanks very much, guys. See you again.